Okay, so we're now inside the auto sleeper. This is above the door. I'm just going to show you the control panel. The trimmer heating, I'm just going to briefly show you because it's very simple and you know how. And then we'll go around the appliances and, and, and the basics, really. Okay, so at the moment I've got it turned on in here. We know it's on because it's got the blue light. I've got the water pump turned on as well. And I've got all the lights on, the lighting circuit. If I want the awning light on, I tap this one. Okay. Now, after about a minute, this display goes dead like it just was. To bring it back to life, you can tap a button or you can tap the middle one just once and it will it will come back and show you what it's doing. It's very clever. Um, there's a big book on this as well. We've got, this is the main one I look at, our leisure battery volts, 14 volts. The vehicle battery, 13 volts. And you can just keep scrolling through and there's loads and loads of options on here. This is another good one. Um, this screen, this shows you both vehicle battery voltage, leisure battery voltage, fresh water tank level, waste water tank level. So very, very good. When you're driving on it, using it, turn everything off. So all the, everything's off in here. Just to the left, we've got the Truma Combi. This works for heating in my hot water. It looks very complicated, but it's not. The one on the left is the heat source select. So we tell it if we're working off the gas. 240 volt or both and the right hand side one we tell it if we've got hot water heating or both now i've just printed out a really good document on this which i'm gonna put in a pack of books it shows you simply how you work it you select the left one do you want to work on electric gas or both and do you want water heating or both so it's it's that straightforward okay then we've got the appliances we've got three burner hob Electric hot plate works off a 240 volt, goes red when it's on. Um, I'll just quickly turn it on, I just like to turn it all on so you can see everything working. But you have to press and hold for a few seconds, same as all these, all these motomes and caravans. That's that one. Lastly, while I'm doing this, make sure you leave that up till it's cooled down because that will shatter. I've got the grill. If you're grilling, you're meant to pull this out. This little plate here, it's a heat deflector, stops stops melting these plastic knobs. Uh, then we've got the grills, that one. Again, let's hold it in. Like so. Obviously, if you're grilling, door open, lid up. And last but not least is the oven, which is this one. Like so. Okay, so that's the cooker and we've got pan storage under here. In this one we've got some gas taps as well on the left. Okay, then we've got the sink which I've opened up and there's a draining board as well which you can flip on and use. You turn it on, it's a pressure pressurised system. So you turn it off, you hear the pump working. When it gets the pressure, it stops. Um, nice lid, integrated holder. The uh, yeah, very liquid in the bits like that, which is really nice. And again, in the bathroom, we've got the sink in here. If you want to close that one off, you do that. While I'm in here, I'm going to show you the toilet actually as well. So, this is the standard FET for toilet you get on all these vans. To use it, you open it up like so. Press the flush button, you hear the pump spin. At the moment, it's got no liquid in it. So you flush it. When you're finished, really important, you close it. If you forget to close it, you won't be able to put it out on the outside. Um, also, while I'm here, this one here does these lights. This light switched on its own. And in the shower, if you do have a shower and turn it on, it automatically brings on the extractor as well, which is really nice. In this cupboard, I've put in all the bits from the cab. The cab blinds that I've set up for you. Um, so I've put all the, the blinds in. So these are the bits that I took off. Um, you've got the aerial here. So this is the directional aerial that I've plumbed into your TV. So all you have to do is, you've probably seen this on, on your caravan, it's probably got a similar thing. You push it up in the air, spin it to whatever direction they're all pointing, latch it up. Really important when you're driving, you undo it and bring it down and tighten it. It's worth doing that to get the better signal. While I'm talking of TVs, 
I'll show you where the booster is as well. So the booster's in the top cupboard up here. And there, I recommend leaving it turned on all the time. And your TV is all in. I've got your nice, I've left a wrapper around it. And it comes out a real long way. That's the edge of TV there. Um, so it's perfect, it all spins around, it's on the triple arm system. The only thing you've just got to be a little bit careful is when you put it away. You have to get it in exactly the right position to close it. And there's your remote for it. And there. 240 volt microwave. To turn it on, the power switch is here. The microwave plate is down here, which is a good idea to take it out when you're driving so it doesn't bang around. Okay, then we've got the fridge. Let's do the fridge next. It's this one here. So this is on. It looks like it's off because there's nothing on the display. But if you look carefully, there's a little green light on the power button just here. So what happens when you turn it on, the display goes live, but so it doesn't keep you awake at night, the display cuts out. At any time, you can just give it a light tap and it tells you what we're doing. So I've got it set to auto mode. It does its what he thinks is best, so it's selective mains. You could override it if you wanted to and go to gas if you want to gas. But I think auto is the best because it would just do it, like I say, do its own thing. And then you can select the temperature as well. And then, like I say, the display will cut off after I think it's about 30 seconds and it will stay green. If it flashes red instead of green, it means it's got a it's got a problem going on. Okay. What else have we got? We've got, obviously got loads of drawers around. This has been glued, so this is working perfectly now and the button's working beautiful. We've got roof vents in here, a couple of different type roof vents. With this one and the one above the cab, always help it up the first few turns because when it's been down for a long time, they stick and it's only a plastic worm gear that can break easily. So it goes right up and you've got your night shade. You've got your floor screen as well. When you're driving, everything has to be closed. Windows, roof fence, the whole lot. So that's that one. This one's pretty much the same. Any difference from this? You have to undo the two black latches first before you start winding it up. And again, you've got the floor screen comes up first on this one, followed by the nightshade behind it. The side windows, again, have all got nightshades, fly screens. The only difference with these ones, when you open it, it works on what we call a click system. So you open it, you hear a click and it stops. If you want to open a bit more, it clicks again, it stops. To bring it, the only way you can bring it down is to go right the way to the top and then it'll fall all the way to the bottom. We've got loads of lights in here, all switched on their own. These are all under here. These ones are all on the top. The blue one by the door, down there, the little auto sleeper logo light is this button here. And there is a little entrance light at night time here that you can click on like so. Uh, also in the kitchen we've got the another light and an extractor, which is really nice. Um, again, this is a slightly different roof end. To do this one you have to undo it here and it pushes up at different levels. Again, really important you bring it down. So loads of things all all work the same. This is your awning winder. When this door shut, to lock it, push the handle in. To lock the cab doors at night time, press the lock button here to lock the cab ones down. Then we've got front seat swivel. In the front middle, there's a big red handle. You push it down and it swivels it. That's what hands up all about there. There's loads of 240 sockets, which obviously only work when you're hooked up to mains. There's no inverters or anything like that. Um, on the cab, we've now obviously got your integrated night blinds. We've got all the ones on the side windows and we've got the one on the front window as well that goes across, which is beautiful. We've got loads of glove boxes everywhere. Stereo, aircon, fan controls, six speed box, cruise control. I'm not gonna go into too much of that on my demo really. Well, that's, you'll just get used to as you're driving. Down here, when you put the ignition on, something called gasset, 
that's your gas tank underneath. That shows you how much gas is in it. And that's pretty much full, to be fair. So that'll keep you going for months and months. Um, to make the bed, ah, that is literally just all slide out. Back cushions drop in. It's a lovely, simple van. Um, last but not least, or oh, say last but not least, a couple more things. Table, three seven tables located in here. Under, I think it's under this side from memory. I just move these cushions out of the way. There's just one thing I want to show you on the combi. If you're not used to seeing a combi, that is. Right. So, this is your trimmer combi here. This produces your heating and your hot water. Down here, there's a little black device. It's called a Truma Frost Control here. Um, and there's a button on the side. Now, when winter comes, you want to drain this off. You don't want this combi full of water because that could crack and grab about £2,000. So, you don't matter. To drain it, what you can do is this blue little lever on the top, at the moment it's facing side to side. If you turned it 90 degrees so it's facing forward to back, that would manually drop the contents onto the floor underneath. But also, as a fail safe, when it gets to two degrees, this will automatically drop. And what will happen is, you can't really see it, but where my thumb is, there's a blue button just here. It pings out. When that pings out, it does the same thing. It automatically drops the water. So if you're using it during cold weather, you always have to make sure that button's in and it's facing side to side, not forward to back. Okay. Right, also, while I think of it, there's so many things on these motorhomes. I haven't shown you where the 240 trips are, and that's in this cupboard. So, it, this runs on what's called Sergeant Electrics, this van. Um, everything's located on here. It's not worth touching any of this. Leave it as it is. But in here, we've got our 240 trips, and in here, we've got all of our 12 volt trips as well. In, again, in the book, it tells you if, for example, your lights stop working, which fuse to go to. So, but apart from that, I recommend leaving these buttons at the top in the same position. That's pretty much it for my basics because I don't want to confuse you too much with everything. Um, just to recap, most important thing from a drawing point, roof fence latched, windows latched, everything closed, fully clicked down. And on this panel, obviously make sure that's off first. I just turn these off one by one. And that's it.